Alright, so welcome to this creative monster design modeling tutorial. I'm going to go through a couple of steps in which I used to create this little thing right here, this egg monster thing, which I never really named. We're going to be sculpting it in ZBrush, then retopologizing and UV mapping it in Maya, and then polypainting it in uh, in ZBrush again. So that's what we're going to do, and this first part is going to be sculpting, and I'll, you know, get right to it, so... Like we usually do in these series, well, as I did in the last series as well, uh, what I'm going to do to start this off, because I'm not using, as I say, this is titled Creative, so I'm not actually using any kind of, it's not a commissioned work, I'm not using some sort of uh, concept art or anything like that, even though I kind of, I, I based it on a really, really shitty drawing I did. Um, if you must know, but I'm never ever showing that. I don't even think I have it saved. I probably burnt it because that's what I should have done with it. So I'm starting here off here to, uh, with Z spheres because that is a good base to make your model here. And uh, I'm kind of using it because I don't really know entirely what I want to do. I kind of know in my head a s light like resemblance of an idea I've got in my head. Uh, for what I want it to look like. I know I want it to kind of be like an egg shape type thing, an egg creature. Uh, mimic, kind of, kind of inspired by the uh, aliens, you know, the, the, the Ridley Scott aliens type things. Like the, the alien eggs, like those, uh, that kind of egg design. I really do like those. Those are some of the best, I think, monster designs ever really made. And uh, I, I do admire those. So I want to keep those kind of as in, uh, in inspiration. Uh, and I'm just kind of... Pr playing around here. I kind of like the idea of having fingers kind of going around and kind of holding an eye in the middle. Kind of having the, um, because the way the, the alien eggs work, it's kind of this really thick skin that opens and curls open, and I kind of wanted it to be so, I kind of wanted an eye in there, because if you figured that would be kind of freaky, so I, I wanted to try something out with that, and I figured if I added a bunch of fingers into it, uh, it would make it that much better. Uh, as it turns out, it really, I didn't like that idea, so I scrapped it. How I did do the fingers there, if you must know, is, uh, <laughs> is I just use radial symmetry, basically, in the, the transform palette tool box thing. You can activate symmetry, and you can uh, activate radial symmetry, uh, deciding, you know, how much, uh, how many you want, stuff like that, and you can just, you know, use that to make uh, a kind of a straight circle, and uh, that's what I used. So here... I'm using Z-sphere meshes instead of just ran like standard polyspheres because or Z-sphere like the the standard zebra sphere. I'm using Z Z um Z spheres instead of those because the the zebra spheres. I'm sure this sounds very complicated or well very confusing because of the the m m multitude of spheres using. But yes, these spheres that come with zebra the polyspheres. They have really, really shitty geometry. The, their geometry are really is really bad. Uh, they have giant poles on the ends of them, but they basically, yeah, that's what they do, and that that is a very, very problematic kind of sculpting on those. So what I did was, and this was before the days of Dynamesh. It's been a while since I recorded this, so this was before Dynamesh was out. So I couldn't use that. Uh, if you do know what that is, so this was just. You know, kind of like that. So I used a poly, poly. Uh, sorry, I used a Z sphere to create the the base because that gives a pretty even poly flow. It's basically like when you get a cube in a, a in Maya or something like that, and then subdividing that, that gives a completely even sphere, uh, even polygon sphere, which you know is really helpful to sculpt on. So that's basically what I did. And now I'm going in. I kind of flatten the top to just make it kind of egg like. And now I'm kind of masking off the area where I want the egg to be open because I want the I want the egg to. This is going to be a final, like, still. It's going to be a shot. You saw, you saw an image of it, or a turntable of it in the beginning. It's basically a still image of it. it. It's not going to animate. It's not going to go into a game or anything like that, even though I kind of tr do try and make it optimized for that, but, but it's obviously not going into that, so... I just want it for a shot, and therefore I want the egg to be open from the start. So here I'm going to kind of make an eye-ish shape, and then kind of use the inflate tools to push it in. Uh, as a base, obviously, this is the I'm doing here, and uh, it obviously doesn't look great, but then I'm going to modify it uh, more, I'm going to kind of playing around, I have, I hid the mask, because that makes it easier to, for me to see, if you don't know how to do that, you press Control H on your keyboard in ZBrush, uh, and that will hide your mask, it's exactly the same as kind of uh, show hide extras in Photoshop, if you know what that is, it's also Control H, and it just kind of shows and hides 
uh, similar things, things like that, selections and stuff. So if you do that in ZBrush, it does similar things. Here, I kind of uh, play around. I kind of this was before I realized I could just stick a sphere in there instead of actually like modeling in the eye in the mesh. Um, so. I just I'm I'm doing it like like this for now, but I'm going to change that later on. I did choose to keep this kind of uh, exper experimental like stage uh, in here because I thought it was kind of interesting. Because unlike the previous series I did, the the bonsai tree series, where I really had kind of a set idea for what I wanted, I really don't really know how this is going to turn out. So I think it's kind of important to see my process of, uh, of my thought process of kind of discovering what I did and stuff like that. So here I'm going in with the uh, standard brush on a low subdivision level and kind of just blocking in shapes like folds because this is going to be a very organic shape. So folds are going to be a, be very a very large part of the model. So here I really also. Here I realize I can just put a, a sphere in there, so I kind of uh, make it a bit more hollow. I could have pushed it any further, but uh, it's, I, it's never going to be shown in that area of the model, so I don't really bother. Again, kind of making that ridge. I feel that the ridge is going to be a really prominent part, because I want it to be... Uh, I wanted to give the impression that it's kind of curled up. So what I do here is I go in with the clay tubes brush, which I think is it's very good for... Uh, basing out shapes, I think. It's very good for that, and it kind of gives a nice texture to it as well. So I use that usually at the start of my model, and then, you know, going in and smoothing it out later. What I'm doing here with the masking is I activated X symmetry, because I want this to happen on both sides, and I'm kind of trying out this idea that I want some sort of exposed kind of organs on the sides here that kind of look like they're pulsating or breathing or something like that, because... Uh, Again, I kind of like that look from the the face huggers in particular. This is where I'm 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 basing a lot of my inspiration from Alien because uh, I kind of I think this was just after I rewatched the movie, so I was kind of in a a fit <laughs> of of Alien design space. But whatever, I just you know the the face huggers having these kind of breathing uh, inhaling type um, pulsating things, which are really kind of freakish. I mean, face huggers in particular are, are just some of the best best designs I've ever seen. So. I'm trying to incorporate some of those kind of uh, living elements to it because I want it to be. I don't want the egg to be just a shell. I want the egg to be part of the of the monster, and I want it to exist, coexist, and kind of breathe and live on its own. So here I'm doing that. I'm only going to defining the the what I what I'm doing right now is defining the kind of ridges and stuff like that with the Damien Stand brush. The Damien Stand brush does not actually does now. It does come standard with ZBrush. Uh, it just doesn't show up in the brush palette. You need to import it. It is in your ZBrush folder if you have the newest version, which you should have. And um, it, you just need to press import and then choose it because you, it does come with ZBrush. It's very, very good for basing out shapes and stuff like that. Or, well, separating shapes. So here I'm going in more with the clay tubes and kind of uh, really showing off that there are two different ridges and they aren't just connected. And I'm going in smoothing it all out. Because that's what you want to do at this stage of the model. You want to make a lot of really rough shapes. I've mentioned this before, but it's important enough to be to be mentioned again. You want to do a lot of different shapes, uh, big and kind of rough, and then you want to smooth it out. And uh, the clay tubes brush is especially good for that. So I'm kind of playing around with the idea of kind of having skeletal elements on the back of it, uh, kind of this this. Um, ribcage looking thing here because I figured that that would look kind of cool and I, I like skeleton skeletal things <laughs> I think that looks kind of interesting so I play around with it here again another thing that the clear tubes brush is really good at and I I think that that's going to be something that's that's kept along the entire sculpting process is that little design choice uh, it's going to be you know carried alongside everything else I think I'm going to work a bit more on the pouch like thing here uh, doing a bit of an indent uh, because uh, I kind of want it to look like a kidney or something like that, and uh, it I, I want this monster to look disgusting. Basically, that's what what my aim is, and uh, I I'm I I kind of I I'm happy with the results. So I I I it's important to mention the subdivision levels here because I'm kind of I'm high-ish right now. I'm on subdivision level four, I think, and. Uh, it's gone fairly quickly, mainly because I, I've sped this video up a lot, because this is this was originally a 12 hour long video, so I've kind of done a lot of cuts and done a lot of speed ups to get into a viewable size. I know a lot of you guys uh, complain about that stuff, but uh, it's just kind of what I have to do. I want to show as much as I can without it being unbearable to watch, and I want to keep it somewhat, somewhat uh, educational as well, so... 
Uh, yes, that's what I'm trying to do here. Uh, and yeah, the subdivision levels, you want to keep it low at the start. You don't want to instantly go up to high division levels. I'm kind of high at the moment, but that's because I've, I've worked up from level 1. And I think that that's the way you want to do things. I'm using a lot of masks here, because I wanted this area to be really kind of isolated. I Obviously, the ridge, I don't want altered, so I use masks, and masks are really good for stuff like this. Uh, obviously, masking is done by just holding control, and it's basically like doing a selection. Uh, and here, I can kind of in incorporating some gravity elements into the pouch, uh, having it kind of indented as if it's breathing, and kind of having it a bit um, protruding at the end, or at the bottom section of it. Which just makes it look a bit more alive. And you see, I, I've done all these ridges and kind of separational uh, lines I've done with the Damien Stan brush. And then with what I'm doing now is with going in with a pinch brush and then kind of uh, over defining or kind of pinching together the Damien Stan brush's uh, strokes to make them a bit sharper. Because the Damien Stan brush is quite a soft brush. So if you want it to be sharper, you do have to pinch it together. So what I'm doing here is a kind of a trick. I'm trying the planar line tool. Uh, it's kind of something that aren't uh, by someone else. It doesn't work that well in this model in particular, but you can do that to kind of make it look like um, strained flesh that's kind of been stretched between two pieces, two two uh, elevations of material or, or something like that, which I tried to do there. It didn't quite work out. I'm going to try it a bit more later on, and it's not really going to work out then either, but, uh, you know, it's important. I mean, that does work generally on other models, and... Uh, I was quite new with the plane line tool. This was right when I think that that was released. So, yeah, it was a while ago, and um, I was a bit new with it. I didn't entirely know how to use it to its full potential. Disregard when doing here completely. Completely, it looks like I'm giving it breasts. I'm not, in fact, giving it breasts. I'm trying out some uh, different designs here. I'm kind of wondering if I want some sort of uh, upper bone area or something like that, or if I just wanted to be kind of folded over, and what I'm trying to right now is kind of the bone idea. It doesn't quite work out. It's, it, that's one of the things that kind of really sound cool in my head, but then put into action isn't really, sorry, isn't really that cool at all, um, which you'll see right here. It kind of lo just looks like he has a scarf on, which I'm not very happy with that. It's not meant to be looking like he has a scarf on, or, or it kind of looks like a big mouth, which doesn't entirely work either, so... Uh, you'll see me undoing this later, or right now, in fact. Uh, and then realizing that my undos are set to too low, and I have to, I can't undo any further, and therefore I have to smooth it out. If you don't know how to set the undo levels, you just do it under the preferences um, menu, and under uh, memory, you can set the amounts of undos you have, of course. That is uh, usually depend on the system, how high you can go. Uh, my system is fairly alright, so I can go, I can put that up a bit quite high. Generally, I forget to, though, which is an issue, <laughs> but uh, in this case, I think it was a bit alright. I mean, it didn't matter that much. All you do is, uh, if you have large areas like that, uh, you you can just lower the subdivision level and smooth it out on that, because that will, that'll do more changes. Here, I, I masked off the lower area of this ridge and then pulled it over, kind of to make it a bit more overlapping, to look like it really is folded, which is actually very effective. And uh, you'll see the effect right here, and I'm going to eventually smooth it out. It's a bit sharp right now, but I'm going to fix it later. Again, going in with the clay tubes brush, putting some details in. Uh, I really do like, I mean, the inherent with the clay tubes brush, it kind of gives off a texture with it, it uh, with the, the kind of non, non smooth uh, nature of it. It kind of has a texture to it as well, which is actually really nice. Uh, sometimes I, I don't actually smooth it out and just leave it on there because I really like the look of it, so that's kind of an unintentional bonus of it, uh, I guess. Going in here with the Damien Stan brush again, uh, doing a lot of defining. You'll see me use the Damien Stan brush a lot during these videos because, uh, uh, if anything, the of if if this if this video series shows you anything, it's that the Damien Stan brush is very versatile and very good for organic meshes, and even even you know mechanical stuff. But that's not really going to be part of this me this video. Uh, good, you know, using it to define the rib cage right here, and uh, not much to much to say about that little point there, it's fairly straightforward what I'm doing right now. Now I'm going in with the, the trim dynamic brush, which is what I tend to use for kind of uh, cleaning up the mesh. As you can see right here, I'm using it to sharpen things up, it's very very handy, uh, very very nice brush, probably one of my favorite brushes uh, that's uh, come out recently. Well, somewhat recently, you can see what it does here. It does really effective things, and it makes it cleans things up very, very well. Makes them very sharp and very clear, 
and it's it's really nice. It's it's something I always use at the end of my sculpting can to just clean things up. Obviously, this is not the end, but it's kind of the end of this stage. I've d been done roughing a lot of things out, so now I want to make things look sharp, which is one of the things Streamline Maker is really good at, as you can see right here. Using it to define that those, yes, those things really are not organic. They are more uh, mechanical than organic in, in look. I guess technically, yes, they are organic because of their skillet on, but... Uh, um, you can see I'm doing the plane line. You can see kind of what it does right here. It doesn't do it very well, but it kind of works here. Um, it's it's quite, as it turns out, just using the Damon's Down much worked better in this case, but uh, in other cases, this does work really well. So it's worth trying out which one you prefer. Uh, but you can see it, it doesn't actually do a bad job here. Uh, it's it's a bit, you need to kind of do it in, in moderation. You can't do extremes with it, as usually with these uh, planar tools, or well, with these line tools. You can't go completely mental because that'll just mess everything up. So you need to kind of be a bit considerate of what you're actually doing. Which I know is a shame, you actually have to think. <laughs> a lot of this is actually quite methodical. I mean, Sculpting is actually really fun, so, uh, and doing kind of these experimental creative designs is some some of the most fun you can have. And now I'm going to go in with the Damon's Down brush, and you can, see, you can see really how it shines here. It's so good at doing these kind of strands of flesh and muscle, uh, because all I'm doing is really running it up and down between these things, and it gives off a very kind of realistic look. And by holding down Alt, it actually do, does uh, protruding details here. Uh, you know, Alt obviously inverses the brushes. Uh, which, if you didn't know, is what it does, and doing that with the Dame Server kind of makes it do ridges and kind of inverses the effect instead of pushing out it, instead of pushing in, it pushes out. And you can see here, running it over a lot of quick, quick times, and you can see, just in a short period of time, even if this is sped up, this didn't really take that long uh, in action either. It, it, it really is very quick, and it gives off a very kind of nice look to the model. Obviously not perfect yet, it's going to have a lot more fiddling done with it, but it, for a for such short time, it's very, very effective. So, using kind of uh, the the Damon's numbers again, just make a really sharp bridge up there, which I'm not entirely sure how happy I am I am with, but uh, it may come and change a bit later on. And that's kind of one of the the really nice things I think with doing monsters like this. I mean, this is I still do 3D just as a hobby. That's all I've done. That's all the reason I've done it uh, since I started, and uh, I haven't really properly done any professional stuff because obviously I'm still in school, I'm not very old. Um, so these kind of things is something I do a lot. I do do experimental stuff a lot, and uh, here, just kind of mentioning this, going off topic, um, it's what I'm doing here, I'm kind of, try kind of trying out doing knuckles on the rib cages, kind of making them look a bit more like fingers. Again, fingers is a very... I do like fingers. Fingers look very, very creepy if you do, do them like this. Uh, finger bones in particular. Uh, but uh, yes, I'm doing, I'm doing. I haven't done a lot of professional work, so I do a lot of experimental creative stuff uh, mostly because they are really fun to do. If you're just playing around in, especially ZBrush. ZBrush makes this so fun. Uh, you can just do whatever you want. I mean, this is something that I I just doodled and uh, ended up looking a lot better in 3D than it did on the paper. That's for sure. Although didn't actually use the paper. I'm one of those modern guys. I use the Photoshop computer type stuff. I know, so fancy. Here's kind of an example why you can't really do extremes with this planar line method. Uh, you can see how it kind of messes things up when I do it like this. And you can't really make it a lot. You can't have. You don't have a ton of control over the size. Maybe that's because of my tablet. Maybe there's something weird about that. But you couldn't. I couldn't really get it much smaller or much um, better than this size. So. In the end, this does kind of work, I guess, but it doesn't work very well, and as it turns out, what I'm doing right here is going in with the Damon stand brush. It does work a lot better, but for what it does, the plain line tool actually does give a good base for the Damon stand brush to work off of, which is, I think, an important bit. I ended up actually, I contemplated this during the process of making this, whether I would actually model the underside of it or not, because I knew in the final render that it basically wouldn't be shown at all. But since this is a personal work, and I kind of like just filling things out and making it look complete, uh, I figured I'd do it. I wasn't on any kind of time restrictions or anything like that, so I figured I'd do it here. And uh, you can see running the Damon's Down brush really quickly over stuff like that makes a really nice effect. I'm going to be repeating this a lot, because a lot of the modeling part of this, uh, this, this monster is going to be just that, doing strains of flesh, kind of connecting different sections of the model. 
uh, because that's I I feel that that's something that I I felt at the time that that looked cool, so I did pretty much everywhere, <laughs> um, and I think it actually gave off a better result than you think. <clears throat> so here I'm kind of uh, you see the kind of the what I call the exhaust pipe, because I knew I'm going to end, in the end have a kind of spine wrapped around this egg, which I kind of had in mind from the start, so that was like what I was planning here. I planned it to connect to there, I kind of, it's, uh, I wanted to have a long tail, kind of, I, a weapon, that's the way it kills enemies, I kind of had the idea of it luring, kind of like a, um, one of those, uh, flying, bur uh, flying flowers, I don't remember the names, um, but, uh, kind of like those things, they lure things in with their tail, and then when they come into their eye, uh, place they kind of eat them from there, and although I'm not entirely sure what they do with the eye to eat them, but yes, separating these ridges a bit more with the Damon's Sand brush, just to get them uh, obviously a bit more defined and a bit more better looking. Uh, using the Damon's Sand brush again, I'm going to use that a lot to um, kind of get get these uh, get a bit of skin-like detail between the two ridges to make it look uh, you know more realistic. Even though this is really, I mean, realis realism is never really something I care too much about when I do monsters like this. Obviously, doing humans, realism is actually quite important because you, you otherwise will spend a permanent, you know, time in the uncanny valley, which is not a place you'd like to be. But uh, doing monsters, you can really be free and just, you know, completely mess around, really. <laughs> um, so you see. I've gone in a bit more during whilst whilst I was talking about nothing. I went in and did a bit more with the tamers, with the trim dynamic brush on the rib cage, rib cage in the back to make it a bit harder edged and stuff like that. So that's maybe why you're thinking that. Here I am pushing it in with a move tool, kind of tweaking the little edge right there. I wasn't very happy with it. I felt it had the wrong shape, so I well, I was playing around with that. I'm just using the move tool there. Nothing nothing too fancy. Uh, and now I am kind of trying to uh, make it look like a skin fold, kind of like there's some sort of fat or something like that, uh, right there, kind of folding over. And I'm not sure if I'm keeping that. I don't think so. It doesn't really look too great. Uh, but yeah, but again, you know, playing around is a very important part of of the the creative process. So that's something you want to keep in mind. You don't want to just be methodical when you're doing fun stuff like this. You just want to play around, see what what looks cool. You have all the time in the world, right? You can just spend your entire life doing this thing, man. Uh, <laughs> here I'm adding the eye finally, just to give some sort of um, just make it look nice and more complete, I guess. <clears throat> and uh, obviously just temporary. I'm not actually going to do any sculpting work on the eye, uh, contrary to what you might see here in a minute, because I'm actually going to try and do that. Um, for whatever reason, but in the end I'm not keeping any sculpting detail on there, I just texture it and do a nice little reflective material on it to make it look like an eye. Um, I could do some really high surface stuff if I wanted to on the eye, but I didn't in the end. Here kind of shaping the inside of the egg for the eye to make it fit perfectly, I think I need to, um, it's a bit far down now, I think I'm going to push it up a bit later on, but uh, again, you want, it to, you want it to be a tight fit, I don't want it to be kind of a uh, weird and oddly fit. I mean, it needs to really sit in there to to look proper. So here again, I'm using the elliptical marquee tool and, <coughs> and masking to kind of uh, try just to do some sort of indent to just show that it is an eye, and just in case I forget, or yeah, I guess for some reason, I don't know. Yeah, eyes are very, very cool, I suppose. I mean, who doesn't like a good eye, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying a bunch of weird things here. It's not really... Um, successful in any way, shape, or form, but I'm going to probably, um, I'm not sure if I, I don't think I keep it like this, I do, um, change this, but, I keep it very simple, uh, right up until the end of the scalping process, I think, and then I realize it looks like shite, and I change it, but yes, I think this is, uh, the, the final thing, I end, I, I indent this a bit, and then I, yeah, catch the point where I haven't done that, so, what I'm doing here, I'm not entirely sure, I'm changing my masking options, and I'm kind of trying to, uh, what am I trying to do? This is an interesting, I'm, I think I'm going to mars mask off the rib cage. is that what I'm doing? Hmm, maybe not, I'm not, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, uh, again, a lot of what I did here was, uh, improvised, so, hmm, this is, oh, yeah, I think I wanted to do, uh, yeah, I think that I felt those weren't kind of proper. I wanted to do more, give more emphasis on them. 
uh, so I kind of tried to inflate them, seeing how that looked, and uh, as nice as, as it does, I mean, whilst it does actually make them stand out a bit more, quite literally, in fact, um, I, I, it felt a bit separated, it didn't feel like a part of the mesh anymore, and therefore I didn't really like it, so, yeah, I'm kind of pushing up the size, I'm using a um, fairly hard focal shift, I think, on my move tool, as I moved those kind of sections back to form those triangular kind of uh, shapes on the, the rib. I'm going to just keep on calling it a rib, because it kind of looks like a reverse rib cage, really. Not even a reverse one, just a rib cage from the back. Uh, that was what obviously I had in mind. I actually don't know a lot of human anatomy uh, like that, like really advanced stuff, uh, to, so I don't really know exactly how a rib cage works, but that is kind of how I imagine it to look, I guess. Uh, going in with the trimmer dynamic again, again, I'm really polishing this stuff up. And you can see kind of the magic it does already, it, it really does make it look sharp. However, obviously the, the um, softness and irregularity of the Damien stand brush does occur here as well. You can see the, the, the edges between the ribs kind of isn't really as defined as I like, but that's why we have the pinch tool, which really can pull those together and make a fine, fine line, which I think is what I'm doing here. In fact, yes, is. look at that, that is uh, infinitely better. I'm going to do that, that for a couple more edges here, just making them a bit sharper. And with the addition of these tools, really, you can do a lot of hard surface stuff in ZBrush now, which is actually quite cool, especially with DynaMesh as well. Um, it's it's definitely quite interesting. So here I'm going to try and just do some very quick detail on the inside here, because I wanted something in there. Um, I mean, it's not very important. I don't think that's an area that's going to be shown a lot as well either, but, um, you know, it's obviously going to be a lot of shadow in there, you know, when I render, but... It's it's something I wanted to just keep in there, because I, I, I like filling everything out when I'm doing personal work. I just would like to have everything in. Here I think I'm, for some reason, forgot to put symmetry on, and I am kind of hate myself for it, but uh, yeah, I'm using the uh, inverted Damien's hand brush to kind of add the spiky tops there to the, the little rib cage, and I think that adds a very kind of nice look to it, and that's why I'm keeping it. Here we go to in and define it. I have subdivided, I think, another level whilst working on that, so everything else looks a bit soft now, so I kind of want to go in and define everything else right now, so... I'm kind of working all over the place, as you can see, I do focus s temporarily on one area at a time, but usually I kind of work all over the place. I do tend to bog down at times, it's stuff like this, which is going to be really intense, and I know that. I do have a tendency to kind of bog down on that for a while, but you you kind of, it's an, I guess it's more personal preference, but uh, general kind of good way of thinking is that you want to work on everything at once and not just get really stuck on one bit for a long time and then scroll uh, then zoom out to realize it doesn't really work with the rest of the model because if you just work on if you work on the entire model as one piece and kind of you know rotate around and work uh, all over the place at once uh, you get a more you get a better feel for the model and you kind of make it um, you make it a bit more natural I suppose so, and you can, obviously, that helps uh, avoiding some issues. I'm going with the clay tooth brush, which is kind of an interesting move, but it kind of does work out here, because it's, uh, I can use it to split these, uh, these little veins up, I guess, and split it up into multiples, which makes it look a bit real more realistic, and I'm going to be, um, you can kind of see the, the texture as well, there's really nice, I really do like that, so, yeah, and here we go with the Damien Strand brush, and again, doing a lot of strands, which, you can see the one it does, it does really do these things very well, I, I do a really appreciative. It's one of my favorite brushes, obviously, alongside uh, uh, Trim Dynamic and, you know, obviously the standard brush and stuff like that, but uh, yes, look, look, just look what this does in such a short time. It does really, really nice at these uh, kind of meaty sections. And I'm not, not saying this is perfect, obviously. I'm going to uh, do a lot more work on this, and even in the end, obviously, it's not perfect because nothing is, but uh, it is uh, really effective of what it does, and this would be really hard to do without it. Okay, I'm going in just really quickly running up and down there just to kind of uh, define the edge, like really define the edge. And uh, again, I didn't entirely know what I was doing when I first started doing that, but then I realized how it looked, and it does look really cool. So I ended up doing that on pretty much all edges ever on this model. <laughs> so just because it kind of looks nice, you can see what it does right there, it's fairly obvious. I'm not entirely sure how to describe it with words, but, but, but that's, you know, why I have a video, so you can describe it for me. And here I kind of realize how much I like the texture, so I go in with a really small clay to brush and just run it quickly over to, to keep the texture. Because, quite simply, I really do like it. I think it really fits the kind of uh, look of it. Obviously not not entirely like that, it's not, that's not the final product, but I'm going to smooth it out a bit, but it, that's generally actually how it's going to look at the end. 
Uh, we gotta keep that. Uh, I'm saving here. I'm not, I didn't cut up me saving because I, I didn't see the reason to, but, um... It's important, I think, to mention in every single tutorial I do that you want to save in intervals. You don't want to save your save files as, you know, save file 1, save file 2, save file 3, instead of just overwriting the same save file. Because if you do do overwrite uh, the, the same save file over and over again just have, and just have one, what ends up happening most commonly is your computer or your software crashing, and then your save file becoming corrupt, and then you having to either redo everything or just give up and go hang yourself, which is never good, is it? No, it's not, so... <laughs> yeah, I mean, saving in intervals is kind of one of those things that just kind of becomes second nature if you do it enough, and, uh... It's something that's very, very important, I think, especially in ZBrush, which does have a tendency to crash if you treat it, uh, wrongly. <laughs> and, uh, again, going along, I'm doing a lot of Damon sand brushing here because, uh, these, uh, breathing sections here are going to be a lot like that. I want them to kind of be the grosser uh, looking part of the, the mesh. And yeah, I mean, this is what I was saying with getting too bogged up in one part, which I do think I'm doing here. I think that's the mistake I'm doing, but I, I really kind of just, <laughs> I found this really fun to do because uh, it's it's kind of, you don't have to think about it and in the end it looks cool. So I found it really entertaining to do, so I was kind of just stuck doing a lot of it. I can probably, I probably overdid it a bit, but... Uh, you know, well, that's not always a bad thing. So you can see that the general process I've been doing with these is kind of strange is going first in with the clay tubes brush, roughing out where I want them, where I want the major shapes to be, and then going in with the Damon Stan brush and refining those shapes and kind of making them look a bit more natural. Here, for some re reason, the video froze or stopped. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. Maybe I'm, I'm probably saving or looking at reference. I, I do still have reference. You always, always want reference when you're modeling or sculpting or doing anything. I guess maybe not UV mapping, but, uh, you know, generally modeling, you want reference for everything. So here I kind of have the, um... <laughs> kind of odd to say, but yes, I did. I did. It wasn't very pleasant, but I did look up some images of kind of mutilated, um morgue kind of bodies and stuff like that to kind of look at flesh look how it kind of looks so I to imitate and uh, I don't get it perfectly but I kind of do try and make it look somewhat like that also just wrinkly skin really is is also a really good reference for this stuff um, as it turns out because uh, it, that's basically what it is it's stretched skin that's just kind of folded in on itself and now, now it looks like that yeah, I'm going in again just um not really again, but going with the stand brush to just flesh that out a bit. I felt it looked a bit odd. It still does, and I think that I need to drop down the subdivision level or two and just smooth that out a bit because it doesn't look really too even, but uh, for now I'm going to leave it because I kind of like the look of it. And I think I'm going to actually, I, can't, I think I keep the irre irrelevant, or not irrelevant, the, the irregular nature of it uh, until, until the end because I do think that organic things are never symmetrical. And I say this while I do have X and John all this time, so I use it on both sides, but I mean, that's mainly because I'm lazy. I mean, technically this would look a lot better if I did it individually on both sides, but you know, I don't because I'm, I'm just I'm slow. <laughs> so here you can see I'm defining the, the thing more with the clay tubes brush, and I do really say that I, I, I do really have to say that I do love that brush. It does so many good things. And excuse the random pauses here, I think I'm just looking at reference uh, for other things, and now I'm apparently being messaged on something or another, but never mind about that, I'm very professional. And using the, the Damon server again to kind of uh, differentiate these uh, these folds, I suppose they are. And, you know, doing kind of random forms like that really do help the organic look of, of the model, I think, because organic stuff is really, while it is really planned out in look and design, it looks really random, so... As I say that, we are reaching the end of the first part, and I'm going to thank you for watching this part, as it turns out, and uh, I will hopefully see you in the next one where we're going to continue sculpting, and, you know, possibly even finish sculpting, I know, very exciting, so hopefully I'll see you there, and, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.